way of tea or cha dao, as they call it in Chinese, it is more than just the drinking of tea. Sure, oolong tea can be exquisite in its taste, but it is the connection with nature, the peacefulness that comes with the philosophy of cha dao, that to me is something very special. It has brought so much joy and meaning to my life in so many ways. I've been conducting tea ceremonies in Koh Samui, Thailand for over 12 years. Through these ceremonies I have met so many friends, both tea masters and tea lovers from many different backgrounds. And we all connect through Oolong. So now comes the Dong Ding tea and this is a very dear friend of mine and an amazing tea master in Taiwan. Yeah. And his tea too is fantastic. Twice a year, I make the trip to the modern epicenter of oolong tea culture, to Taiwan. My first stop is always to Taipei, to visit old friends. So this is Mr. Huang, whom I also call sometimes Mr. Dong Ding. No one makes the Dong Ding tea better than him. And really, when you sit here and drink his tea, what you taste is his love and passion towards the tea. Yeah? We had endless tea sessions here with lots of friends. Everyone I bring here is absolutely happy. And also what you see, of course, is look at the size of this water kettle. Yeah? So when you sit here with a few friends, you're in for serious tea. Mr. Huang's commitment to his craft is inscribed in the calligraphy behind his desk. If we place our heart and our honesty in our tea, many people will come and our business grows like the sunrise. Everyone I buy tea from has their passion really in the tea. And every person, you will see a few, every one of them is different, every one of them. I love them all. <laughs> my goal is to find the very best oolong teas for my friends all around the world. But I've learned that to find these extraordinary oolongs, you can't do it alone. Especially in a city as big as Taipei. So, this is Jenny, my friend since many, many years, and she always helps me in Inge and with translations because she speaks very well Chinese. And yeah. So, today we go to Inge, it's in a, it's a suburb of Taipei, but it's a famous ceramics town. A lot of the ceramics are to do with the tea, tea trade, tea industry, uh, teacups, teapots, tea things, and everything. Tea. Lots yeah. of tea. Yeah, lots of tea. Journey around the island of Taiwan and you will find tea culture everywhere. But in some places it's even more rich than others. Inge is one of those places. Teapots aren't simply vessels to brew and serve the tea. In the right hands, they can become fine works of artistic expression. These ones are carved, but this one I think they call it tree bark. It's made to look as if the bark of the tree has been rolled against the floor. This one, which is very difficult to explain in a picture, this one is so light that if you would hold it in your hand, you wouldn't believe it. Don't you think one of the things that's really special about this shop is that the owners here have the introductions to all the craftsmen? Yeah. So that each shelf you see the different craftsmen, their ideas, their training, where their factories are, what their ideals are. It's really. It's such a whole lifestyle that's going on in this shop, right? Yeah, and it's really, as you say, as Jenny said, it comes alive here. You really, you hold the pot, you look at the picture, and like Jenny, when you can read the story, you connect to the artist.
all these books and magazines you see right there is all around tea. Uh, I mean, we in the West have maybe for sport or whatsoever, but look, this is only for tea. So it's serious, that's for sure. Just absolutely magnificent. So here you have this amazing tool to hold the lid of the metal kettle. You get all the five elements. You have metal, you have the water to make the tea, the tea is earth, then you have the fire, and you have the air where the tea grows and the water comes. So all five elements when you make tea. In Taiwan tea culture, it's not just about the tea, the teapots, it's about everything surrounding the tea. This shop we will enter, he makes the amazing tea trays and brings them really to a different level. He says when his father makes these these products, um, depending on the sort of stone they're using and, and how difficult, how large the piece is, it takes between 20 and 30 days to complete one from start to finish. But just to give you an idea, trays like this will be in the area of four to five thousand US dollar without shipping. That's just the price you pay in the shop. This tray weighs really uh, at least 50 kilograms and beautiful. It's for me, these are Zen style tea trays. Before leaving Inge, there's one last stop to pick up some of my favorite teas and visit some dear friends. Here I'm introducing you to Claire. She's the owner of this tea shop. Um, and coming here since 2007, developed a friendship with her. And she has very good teas, but there's also something, and I can't put my words onto it. There's a friendliness here, yeah? And of course, look at Claire, how beautiful she is. Yeah, that's also one of the reasons as well. Claire and her niece Ivy explain the different varieties of oolong which are cultivated in Taiwan. Their family has had a very long and fruitful relationship with this special tree. So these so, are the names of different places. Yeah, and it's more. This yeah. kind of teas are more high class. So the leaves yeah. are like this. Because the mountain, because the tea is from the higher mountain, so the price will be higher. Mm -hmm. yeah. So the higher you go up the mountain, the better quality, the better price. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Oolong is a tea produced from a distinctive multiple step process which traditionally gives it a dark, curled and twisted appearance. That appearance earned Oolong the nickname of the Black Dragon. Over time, Oolong has evolved beyond this original form, however, and now includes a wide variety of characteristics. Originally grown throughout China's Fujian province, with roots that go back over a thousand years. Oolong today can now be found in places all over Asia and, of course, Taiwan. We are in the Shanlingji Mountains, yeah? And here you see tea fields and the best quality of Oolong tea always grows in high altitude. The higher, the better, they say. Because Taiwan's geography is so varied, even a small island like this can produce a large variety of Oolong teas. Alishan, Dongding, Oriental Beauty and Lishan Oolongs are grown to various degrees of quality all around Taiwan. Our host in Namtou, Wei Chen, comes from quite the tea family himself. Oh, 
but OT now you don't have anymore. No finish, yeah. Yeah, six mm. here. Oh ah, yeah. Six here OT. Yeah. Yeah, six oh. six here. Like all things tea in Taiwan, the selection of oolong packaging can be overwhelming. Okay. I like the packaging. All tea. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Our next stop is to Wei Chen's uncle's tea processing facility. The harvest season has already come and gone, but fortunately, we will still be able to have a behind the scenes look of how it all works. This is a tea company. It's the tea company from Wei Chen's uncle. And here we will see how the tea is made, actually, the roasting and baking process. Years ago, the leaves would have been hand shaken, but today they are tossed in large mechanical tumblers like these to further break down the leaves and enhance the flavor. The leaves will then get placed back into the basket to further oxidize. So for this machine, the tea would be in a cotton bag already very tightly rolled. Then it goes in here and here it gets rolled again. This step forms the leaves and also enhances the flavor. So the next step is then the dehydrating machine here, yeah? where the tea goes then in. The next step stops the fermentation process, prevents mold growth and removes any unwanted tastes. This is for aged tea, where normally they do it once a year and then several years, because they have oolong teas which are six, 10 and more years old and it will be baked in these ovens. Thank you. This simple processing plant is representative of many of the small artisanal tea makers in Taiwan. Tea culture, it is so rich. There's so much to be learned from and so much to be gained from it. It never stops. I never stop learning. Through tea, I have met so many wonderful people from all walks of life and from many different nationalities. And they just keep on coming back to Kusamui and sharing tea and stories. And through tea, Chila became the love of my life. Chila shares the same passion as myself for tea. In Taiwan, there is one master we've not seen him for years. And I hope on this journey, Somehow, I will find him again and then surprise Chila with his tea. So today we are on a magical mystery tour because we are going to one of my old tea guys, but I've not seen him for five years. And through a friend of mine, I got the card again and the address, but he doesn't speak English, I don't speak Chinese. Honestly, magical mystery. Every tea master has his or her own tea brewing method. Master Schwiez is competition grade, both simple and elegant. Six years ago, through a friend of mine, I was introduced to Shifu Shui, and I'm dreaming of his tea. And today, by chance, I'm sitting here again, I found his address again, and I'm in heaven. Master Shui is an organic tea producer and proudly displays his official organic label for all to see. And these are the original competition cups or tasting cups. These ones you can use when you really compare tea and they never take on the taste of any other teas. <laughs> oh, 
Oh my god. Wow. Wow. Why is it wow? There is a smoothness in that tea which is beyond words. You would have to taste it. We hopefully will soon. Shui Sam helps translate the order. His tea is so distinctive, so delicious. I may be ordering a lot more than I had planned. Yes. No tea trip to Nanto would be complete without a visit to the pristine mountain parks of C2. Gorgeous nature, beautiful, peaceful sounds. It is an area perfect for tea drinking. We are at the Blue Dragon Waterfall at the Shanlin Shi National Park in Taiwan. For centuries, people have come to places like this to drink tea and just be with nature. It's a very powerful spot. Tea can also help you in troubled times because you come back to yourself. You're not focusing on all the negativity around. Even when you personally have trouble, sit down, have a few cups of tea, and it may look different. It may feel different. Jia Dao, or the way of tea, can lead one to inner peace. And it can also open one's mind in sharing this culture with others. As you can guess through my accent, I am not a Chinese person. I'm from a small village outside of Munich called Mark Schwaben. My Chinese name, San Bao, was given from my Qigong teacher Daniel Reed and his wife Snow. San Bao translated means body, mind and spirit, three treasures. And this journey, it really started through Quan Yin. I met her as a statue in different temples throughout Thailand. Then I did some research and one day a friend of mine came to my house in Bali where I lived for 12 years and told me there's somebody who channels Kuan Yin, you have to go there. And I'm still on the journey, still drinking tea after all these many years. Shunryu Suzuki, a Japanese Zen master once said, after I finish speaking, there is no need to remember. Have a cup of tea. It is already inside. Through these words, I was inspired to write. If you have any troubles, drink a cup of tea. If you have no trouble, drink a cup of tea. Okay, so the best teas always come towards the end. And this is the golden lily from all of my suppliers. It's only this guy who makes that particular tea. And it's a magnificent tea. One of my favorite and most popular oolongs is from Master Wu. Chenny and I met him at the Taipei weekend market a few years ago. His golden lily is unparalleled. So this is the, the jinxuan, the golden lily, and he says that it's a particular specialty from Taiwan because it's, it's particularly bred to give a sort of milky caramel flavor. I sometimes think it tastes a bit like custard cream biscuits. So it's, it's very popular, particularly with Westerns, because it's got such a distinctive flavor. So it's one of the reasons that he likes to stock it, because it goes down very well. Golden lily is so special. It's very difficult, honestly, it's very difficult even to describe, but there's a flowery essence within the tea which no other tea has. Uh, he says the, the, the jinxuan, the golden lily, there's, there's really nothing added to it, there's nothing added to the leaves, there's nothing added or special during the process. It's just that the, the particular plants were chosen for their flavor and bred together over the generations to give this 
fresh milk flavor, the biscuit flavor that yes. I mentioned yes. before. I must say the moment I have a sip of oolong tea, it's like taking a deep breath. It opens the lungs and I'm absolutely in heaven. Our next stop is to Taipei's art district to meet another old friend. This is Mr. Sun Gu, a very special man here in Taipei, and he creates and makes fantastic tea. This is the special oolong tea by Mr. Sun Gu. It's over 20 years old, and you can see actually when you really look closely that this is hand rolled, they are not all even. Yeah? And it takes him the last step, it's 21 days, where he roasts the tea as the last step. It's an amazing, beautiful oolong tea. Different, it's a dark tea. Yeah? Master Sangu is a former journalist who reported throughout Asia during his career. His focus was on mainland China and many of his customers travel from across the strait to visit him again and again. Master Sun Gu is not only a tea master, but a craftsman as well. He makes all of the beautiful teacups and pots that you see. Many collect them as pieces of art. And this is what you see here now, what I'm always telling people. Tea brings people together. No matter what tradition we follow, what religion, what country we're from, when we drink tea, we are human beings. That's what tea makes. The art history we find in the teapots, in the teaware, reflects the Cha Dao way of being. Simple, peaceful and calm. Cha Dao is about simplicity. We can drink it with many friends or strangers alike, or we can drink it at home by ourselves. Enjoy the tea. We are in the Taiwanese mountains, it's raining outside and it's perfect tea weather. And I show you now here how beautiful, simple it is to make tea. You have a gas burner, electric water kettle, teapot, tea cup, your tea, and then you can make tea wherever you are. That's how simple it is. So we boil the water first. Once the water reached 98 degrees Celsius, the water is ready for making your tea. You pour first a little bit of hot water into the teapot. Just a little bit to warm the teapot. Then you put it also into your cup. And the second pot or a pitcher just to warm them. So you also always smell the tea at the back. If you have guests, let them smell the tea as well. And also show them the tea leaves. This is the dried leaves. And from these small, I call them pebbles. These small pebbles, please, they open up to these big leaves. This is real tea, this is not broken down tea. Just cover the bottom of the teapot with the tea. So once the water is ready, you just pour it into the teapot. Close the lid, even if it flows a bit over, that's okay. So after the 20, 30 seconds, you just pour it from the teapot either in a second teapot or into your open pitcher. And you can make five, six brews. The higher the quality, the more even up to eight brews with the same tea leaves. Then you pour it from your second tea vessel into your cup. If you have friends over, serve them first and then enjoy the tea. Tea can be formal and tea can be simple.
Oolong has given me so much. Peace, purpose, thousands of tea friends from all over the world, the love of my life. I give thanks to the tea by spreading the message of Cha Dao through my tea friends. Thank you for letting me share a little piece of my Cha Dao, my personal way of tea with you.